welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Hello and welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your home for all things related to helping you on your journey to find an amazing job. Each episode, I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, graduate recruiters and career coaches who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute-ish show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had when I graduated. And a big hello to a very special episode, a milestone which has been 2,051 days in the making. Welcome to episode 100 of the Graduate Job Podcast. It's taken me longer than I would have thought to get here, and I wasn't sure if I would at some points, but here explore some of the key things I've learned over the course of these nearly six years and 100 episodes, and how you can put that knowledge to use in your search for a graduate job. I will cover the importance of taking the leap and starting, and how that first step is the most important. I touch upon imposter syndrome and why it's something that everybody has, and how it doesn't go away. I talk about how people will always help if you ask them and why when the going gets tough, you need to stick with it. Crucially, I touch upon why you should always look to learn from the knowledge and mistakes of others, and why it is important to follow your passions. No matter where you are in your job search, this is an episode you won't want to miss. As always, a full transcript which you can handily download, and all the links from today can be found in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash 100. Before we start, let me tell you about the brilliant course I'm working on, cunningly titled How to Get a Graduate Job. This course is packed chock full of, de- chock full of decades of experience into one step-by-step guide of everything you need to do to get a graduate job. There are videos, guides, handouts, cheat sheets, example CVs, example cover letters, example answers to those annoying 200-word competency questions, help with video interviews. Look, if you need to know it to get a graduate job, it's in my course. The course is going live at the end of August, with the exact date to be revealed very soon, but to be the first to hear about it, and to get it at a never-to-be-repeated price with special bonuses, head to graduatejobpodcast.com slash course and leave me your email. So, let's get going on today's show, with point number one. You need to start. You, dear listener, wherever you are in the world, are listening to me sat recording this on a wet and windy day in July in my temporary home of Leeds. We've not met, but here you are, listening to me gabber away. Listening to me gabber away. All because, coming up to six years ago, I decided to launch a podcast. To date, I've had coming up to 400,000 downloads from over 150 countries around the world. People have been listening to the show in Togo, Guadeloupe, Benin, Tajikistan, and everywhere in between. I've coached people one-on-one to get jobs in four different continents and received countless emails from people who have kindly reached out to say how much the show has helped them with different aspects of getting a graduate job. And all this happened because I started. The easy thing to do would have been not to start. I didn't have any broadcast experience. I'd never done a podcast before. I didn't have any of the tech. And it was scary as hell. But I started nonetheless, and here we are, six years later and a hundred episodes in. To get the graduate job of your dreams, you also need to start. Applying for jobs can be scary. You're exposing yourself to criticism and opening yourself up to rejection. People that you don't know are going to be passing judgment on you, and you might fail. However, to get a job, you don't have a choice. You have to put yourself out there. If you never start the application, if you never click send, you're never going to get the job. I can remember how nervous I was the first time I was putting the first episode live back on the 22nd of November 2014. Embrace that fear and don't be afraid to take the leap. Great things will come from it. And point number two is imposter syndrome. Starting can be difficult, but once you've started, you've started. The thing that doesn't go away, though, is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where you doubt your accomplishments and have a persistent internalised fear of being a fraud. It affects men and women equally, and it's real. 
I had this starting the podcast and I've had it with every guest I've ever approached. And I still have it now when I reach out to big companies to come on the show. Six years later, a hundred episodes in, and it's still a voice which pops up when I'm about to send an email. They're never going to come on the show. They'll say to you, why would we do that? You've got better things to do than to do that. Now that no company or guest has ever come back to me and said that is by the by, but it's still a thought that appears. Now I'm better now than I was at shutting that voice down, but it's always there, and it probably will always be there. Now the thing about imposter syndrome is that you understand why you have it, but you're surprised when you hear that other people have it as well. Now they'll probably be looking at you and thinking the same thing. I know why I have it, but I'm surprised that they've got it. It's just something that everybody has. And imposter syndrome can really impact people as they look for credit. It stops them from applying for jobs in the first place. Well, there's no point in me applying for this, is there? I'm just never going to get it. So people don't end up applying. And if you don't apply, it can be really difficult to get the job. And then as you go through the process, sitting at an assessment centre, that voice will kick in again as you look around the room at the other candidates in their sharp corporate outfits and you think to yourself, oh, I shouldn't be here. They're all got better work experience than me. Bet they all went to better universities than I did. Bet they did courses that are more relevant to this job than I did. Or whatever it might be. You'll be oblivious to the fact that they're probably sat there looking at you, worrying about the same thing. And even if you do get the job, it will still be there. It will be there telling you that you're the one mistake that the recruiters made. The one imposter who slipped through the net at all those different stages. And again, the other new starters will be worrying the same thing. Imposter syndrome never goes away. It's just something that you have to learn to live with and deal with. Author Seth Godin talks about it and deal with. Author Seth Godin talks about it a lot in his book Lynchpin, tracing it back to the part of the brain called the amygdala and what he calls the lizard brain and how it evolved to keep us alive back on the plains hundreds of thousands of years ago. Useful then? Not so useful now. If imposter syndrome is something you struggle with, it's well worth a read. Seth Godin, Lynchpin. Links in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash 100. Point number three is people will help. Following on from imposter syndrome, if you can break free and be brave, you will find people are universally friendly and helpful. Starting the podcast, I was approaching best-selling authors like Denise Taylor, John Gregory, Richard Morn and Steve Rook. I hadn't launched, I had zero shows and I was asking them to give up their time to record. They all said yes. People love to help and they love to share their knowledge. Applying for graduate jobs at the moment, the number one thing you can do is speak to people doing the job you want at the company you are applying to. People are scared to ask, worried that people will say no. Some will, but what if they say yes? Use LinkedIn to find alumni from your university and ask them for five minutes of their time. If you approach them in a courteous and friendly way, they will say yes more often than not. And point number four is stick with it. Starting something is always fun, and I do have shiny Red Bull syndrome. Launching the podcast was exciting putting content out into the world and trying to help people as they look for work. But sustaining it has been hard. My aspiration initially was for an episode a week, but that lasted until about episode four. And sustaining it since then has been hard, especially when life, work, friends, holidays, stag do's, illnesses, family, they all get in the way. And then family, they all get in the way. And then when downloads plateaued, when the tech stopped working, When the website crashed, it was tough to keep plowing on. Working full time and spending the precious free time that I did have putting out episodes that not many people listened to was tough, but I stuck with it. Applying for graduate jobs can be equally demoralising. Hard work goes in, hopefully, and then nothing can come out the other end. Spending hours and hours researching companies, completing online applications, crafting brilliant answers to 200 word competency questions, putting your time, heart and energy into it, and then sometimes nothing, other than a rejection with no explanation why. Thank you for the application, but we will not be progressing at this stage. Or you do get through and you progress through the process at such a snail's pace, waiting and waiting for the next stage, or from graduate recruitment teams that just never respond. Just never respond. Getting a graduate job is hard, but it's worth it. Stick with it 
and just think of this episode when the going gets tough and you feel down. Point five is learn from others. One thing that I've learned over the course of the six years is definitely the power of learning from others. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. People have gone before you and made tons of mistakes, so learn from them. Before I started the podcast, I bought an online course which told me step by step everything I needed to do to launch a podcast. What equipment to buy, how to use it, how to record, the best way to edit episodes and launch the podcast, how to get it on iTunes and all the other podcast providers. Now, the course wasn't cheap, but it allowed me to save hundreds and hundreds of hours of frustration. Somebody else had done all the hard work and I could learn from them. Without the course, I don't think I'd be speaking to you today. Now, as a graduate job seeker, learning from others is also crucial for you. as well. This might surprise you, but you aren't the first person to graduate and to look for a graduate job. No matter what issue you face, someone else has been through it and will have written a book on how to get through it. If you're listening to this and you have no idea of what job you should apply to, read How to Find a Job You Love by John Lees. If you want to get into PR or banking or advertising or law or whatever field it is, there are specific books on exactly what you need to do in each of those fields. If you do know what you want to do, have you spoken to people in your chosen field or your chosen company? Have you spoken to people who are working where you want to work, doing the job you want to do? If not, why not? Find them on LinkedIn and ask them for a chat. What advice do they have? What mistakes did they make? What path did they take? And what do they wish that they had done differently? Learn from those that have gone before you. In the same vein, as a graduate career coach for the last five years, I've been helping people jobs and internships. You don't have to do it by yourself and make the mistakes yourself. With graduate application, one mistake can put your application straight in the bin. A rejection, and then you've got to wait one more year before you can apply again. I can help you shortcut the process by sharing my years of knowledge with exactly what you need to do to get the job. Other people have made the mistakes so that you don't have to. Now, this is the whole point of my soon-to-be-released course, How to Get a Graduate Job, which distills down all of my knowledge and learning over the years into a step-by-step course. Sign up at graduatejobpodcast.com slash course to hear more. Don't reinvent the wheel, people. Utilise the knowledge of other people. And finally, point number six is follow your creative passions. The podcast is here today because I followed my creative urges. Up to my sabbatical in September, I've been working full time in an internal consulting role for a big internal consulting role for a big FTSE 100 company. Lovely people, a great place to work, but I wasn't passionate about the work. It didn't excite me, it didn't fire me up, and it didn't give me a creative outlet. So I created something that did, which also aligned with my values of wanting to help people. The podcast allows me to be creative, to write, to try new things, to speak to interesting people I never would have spoken to before, to learn and do new things, to push myself, and to, importantly for me, help people. Don't lose sight of what your creative urges are. Once you start a graduate job, it can be easy to let your hobbies and activities that you love slip by. What are the things that fire you up and have you set the alarm at 5.30 in the morning so you can get 90 minutes done before you have to go to work? Ideally, try and fulfil these with your work, but if not, carve out time and energy for them outside of work. Can you start them as a side hustle, a passion project to keep life interesting? What is your equivalent of the podcast? Make sure that you aren't giving everything you have at work so you have nothing left for yourself. So there you go. Episode 100 in the bag. 2,051 days from episode 1. And at this time, I just want to say a very special thanks to a few people. Namely, you. Thank you so much for listening to the show. You're the reason I do it, so I hope you are finding it useful. If you do, please rate, review and subscribe wherever you listen. I'd also like to say a quick thanks to all my guests from the first 100 episodes, namely John Gregory, Denise Taylor, Richard Morn, Steve Rook, twice, Mildred Talabi, David Schindler, Sarah Stimson, twice, Jack Catherall, Ali Patterson, Liz McGuire, Michael Tafula, Jennifer Holloway, for coming on multiple times, Mark Williams, Ernst Young, Matt Herndon, twice, Brad Burton, Prash Majmuda, Stephen Thomas, Corinne Mills, twice, Sarah Sunley, 
Simon Reichwald, Teach First, Chris Delaney, Karen Kelsky, Kim Stevenson, Frontline, Think Ahead, Inga Woodstra, Jeff Thompson, Ben Williams, Kath Houston, Marielle Kelly, Chris Ma, Annabelle Smoker, Andres Banath, Instant Impact, Raghav Haran, Tamara Rickleary, Josh Doody, Enterprise, Police Now, Alan Novery, Amber Brown, Jeff Kavanagh, Craig Williams, Leanne Jacobs, Unlocked Graduates, Sophie Milliken, MJ DeMarco, Golin, David Vane, Charity Works, The Royal Mail, Dr. Colby Jubenville, Tristam Hooley and Corin Hooley and Corin Grant, Jason Sweat, Sarah Cave, Nick Elston, Mars, Emma Rosen, Change 100, Scott Barlow, we're nearly there, don't worry, IPS Grow, Job Test Prep, Karen Deep Badwell, D.S. Smith, Brand Sinclair twice, and my coaching client, Jean. I couldn't have done the show without you. Links for today in the show notes over at graduatejobpodcast.com slash 100. And if you do want to learn from the expertise of others and invest in yourself, then sign up at graduatejobpodcast.com slash course to hear about my course on how to get a graduate job. Let's leave it there then today. Join me next week when I have Cap Gemini on the show talking about their brilliant graduate opportunities that they have available. I hope you enjoyed it today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.